Hey, buddies, Potato McWhiskey here, and welcome to Civ 6. I've been getting a lot of requests to do a tall game, so that's what we'll do today. Now, in my opinion, you probably shouldn't do a tall game, like, blindly. It's usually something you pick based on the available land. However, I think I can teach a little bit about the game if I force a tall game. Anyway, completely random civilizations, deity difficulty, standard sorts of stuff. Do I want to play with a game mode? I really like monopolies and corporations. I just wish it didn't have such a huge impact on the tourism mode. Let's do barbarian clans. Barbarian clans is fun. And I'll just leave it at that. That way things don't get too crazy. Deity difficulty, standard game speed, Pangea map, abundant resources, new world age, legendary start position and wet rainfall. I think that is the perfect starting point. Now, if I do manage to randomly roll a sieve that isn't particularly good at going tall or maybe particularly suits itself towards going wide or is extremely militaristic, I might not play it. But I haven't played Grand Columbia in a while and maybe a tall Grand Columbia game could be interesting. Yeah, I think Grand Columbia is playable here, especially with this start location. Oh my God. Uh, this is the definition of a legendary start position. We have four food tiles. We have two food, two production tiles. We have a three food, five production tile. One of the best tiles in the game. The only thing I think this is missing is a hill for it to actually be better. Um, yeah, there isn't really much higher a roll than this high roll right here. The only question is, which tile do I settle on? I do see the edge of Tundra here, which tells me that I'm towards the edge of the map. And if I zoom out and take a look here, you can see that we are actually towards the north. So likely we want to expand south, east or west and avoid settling too much Tundra if we're going to do a tall game. Hmm. Yeah, this is an interesting location. I actually have many, many viable locations to settle upon. For example, I could actually settle the spices. That would give me a three food, one production capital. That doesn't actually sound that good. I definitely want to settle adjacent to the spices. It's a question of do I want a two food, two production capital or do I want a three food, one production capital or do I want a two food? So either of these three locations is viable, okay? Do I want a three food, one production, a two food, one production, or do I want a two food, two production? My instinct is to move to the sheep, but what's the downside of moving to the sheep here? Well, if I move to the sheep, I still have really good tiles available. I move a little bit closer to the tundra, which means I would have to settle closer to the tundra later, but the land over quality over here isn't very good anyway, so I open up maybe better settlements down here to the south. Let's move our warrior first before we make our decision. We'll peek across the river and see if maybe there's anything that would pull me down towards the rice. The silk is quite helpful here. Theoretically, this is only a two movement cost tile, so I could move to here and settle on the first turn and get a three food, one production capital city, instantaneously begin working another three food, two production tile and grow this city incredibly rapidly. I would miss out on the rice tile, which would make a water mill less valuable in this city. Settling in place means my water mill has like insane value because it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven potential resources here for the water mill to boost. Really, really crazy stuff for a tall game. Hmm. I think with the knowledge that if I move one tile to the north to the sheep, that one, two, three tiles away, there's actually two viable potential city locations right here that could do totally fine. I think I will go ahead and move to the sheep. I think the sheep tile just has better tempo and it also puts me in range of the silver later in the game. So that's another amenity under my belt. So I think I, think I made a reasonable choice there. Let's go ahead and settle. And if you're going for a tall game, your first choice in terms of what you want to build is actually fairly standard. You usually, you want to get something in the region of two scouts. Um, that's just like, that's just going to be standard across all games. Now our opening technology here, it kind of really depends on what we plan to improve in the early game. We have a lot of plantation resources. Uh, let me just go ahead and mark out some resources here. We'll have a plantation here as well as here. Now the Hacienda, I don't remember how exactly that works. I'm going to take a moment here to look it up. This is a unique improvement that we get a little bit later in the game. We have to unlock mercantilism, which is pretty deep into the cultural tech tree. But once we do get it, we will have access to this really good tile. They can only be built on grassland and grassland plains hills. Hmm. Need to think about how exactly I want to do this. Well, I, I definitely feel like, you know, 
luxury resources are going to get improved the way that they're going to get improved. You can't change that. So I should I should build my tile improvements around that. I definitely think getting mine on the copper early game is fine, but eventually this might become an hacienda. Um, and some of these resources might get deleted in favor of getting some more haciendas. I probably will be keeping these farming resources just because of the sheer amount of food that they theoretically provide, especially with the addition of a watermill, which leaves potentially one, two, three, and four locations for haciendas here around this thing. I'm pretty sure. Plantations actually get plus one production for every two haciendas. So in an ideal world, you would hit them with as many of those as possible. So I think something like this maybe looks reasonable. Maybe I would be better off building a triangle of haciendas instead of trying to force it around so much. This looks a little bit more reasonable to do something like this. I definitely think there's an okay spot for a campus here. But the unfortunate reality is I also have to consider where is my main block of districts going? So that'll require me to do a little bit more exploration before I can make that determination. One advantage of Gran Colombia actually is you don't have to go for scouts because your slingers are kind of like scouts, but their scouts are just naturally better anyway as uh, Gran Colombia. So you still do want to go scouts, but you can theoretically decide to skip them because you have three movement units as a default. Yeah, if, I, if, I'm, if I'm taking a look at this, I think the tile improvement that potentially like if I were to pick up a builder right now which tech would I love to have researched it's probably mining yeah probably mining I mean plantations would be great well if I go pottery and get a builder early I could go fast plantations and sell off these resources for early money I that might actually be better early gold play I, yeah I think early gold play is a reasonable way to do this here Okay, nice. We got 40 gold from that. That's pretty good. Could theoretically buy a tile if we have one that we think is worth it. Attack once it's this barb camp and then heal a little bit. The best way to do things. Scout picks up a tribal village. Another 40 gold. So we're at 115 gold already this early into the game. I could theoretically switch into a settler. I do think it's good to go for a two scout opener though in most games. The amount of information you get from scouts is just too valuable to uh to ignore it i love i love that grand colombian scouts can move and then also cross rivers it's like a unique property that no other civilization can do we have found taruga but we were not the first to find them they want me to get a great general likely not possible so we know there's another player to the south or east of taruga at a high probability okay we can steal this uh, tribal or this yeah barbarian encampment so we managed to yoink that which will get us a little bit of gold or a little bit of experience and some era score that was a good yoink his city is to the south let's grab the pillage here which will get us a promotion as well as that and a whole bunch of era score so they were going to kill it so we may as well be the guy to kill it this scout is going to enrage and likely attack my city. Yep, there it is. And we can go ahead and take the battle cry promotion on my warrior. You always take the battle cry promotion because it gives you the most wide range of buffs. It's offensive and defensive. It protects you from ranged units and from melee units and also allows you to attack. So we got our two scouts in Bogota. Uh, and usually the next thing you want to do is like a builder and settlers. Right now, this city, I think, is working a little bit too much growth. So I'm going to focus on the deer tile to get this builder a couple of turns sooner so that I can uh, actually get the farm down on the rice, the plantation on the spices, and then the plantation on the cotton, I think would be the three major things that I would like to get done early game. I actually picked up irrigation. I was planning on using a builder for that. Maybe I go settler then. Because this builder would only give me gold and not production. You know what? I can get a nine turn settler here. I'll get a nine turn settler. As you can see, the battle cry promotion or battle cry promotion is giving me plus seven combat strength against this warrior on the offense. But I don't need to actually do that. Scouting information is more valuable. I can let other people kill those units. More spices over here to the left. This is definitely enough spices to support a city. I'll go ahead and place pins on this as well. And we can yoink ourselves another tribal village, boosting mysticism, very nice. If I am a little bit sniffly or stuffed up this uh, series, I do apologize, it was recorded as I'm recovering from COVID. Uh, we did find the Dead Sea, and there's a boat in the Dead Sea, which... <laughs> Why is there a boat in the Dead Sea? That probably tells us there's a barb cap next to the Dead Sea. Uh, we found Johannesburg, we were not the first to find them. They give plus one production for every improved resource type. That could be quite helpful to be Susan of these guys relatively early into the game. And they only want me to send them a trade route. So theoretically, uh, the landscape of possibilities here are starting to shape up for the early game about you know, where we might settle, 
who we might make friends with. I do want to loop back and just have a better idea around my own area. And I want to start marking, marking luxury resources with plantations. If I can get a Pantheon this game, it's probably going to be Plantation Pantheon, just because look how many plantation resources are around me. It's kind of crazy. Actually, it's like the it's like a really, really great spawn for Grand Columbia. It's like I can put a hacienda, pair of haciendas in, be, in between these. Uh, I can surround these in haciendas like so. So things are looking great for our mid game. So I'm thinking about what I want to do here. And I my plan is starting to take form. It's going to look a little bit like this. There's going to be a government plaza on this stone most likely and then both of these farms are going to get deleted which will heavily lower the value of a water mill in the city but i'm okay with that because these are getting replaced with campuses and then there's also going to be commercial hubs sprinkled here and then another two campuses on this side and um, this kind of configuration for districts for your government plaza is actually pretty valuable because i'm in a position now right where all of these districts have at least two adjacency and with the addition of a single district anywhere I can upgrade them to three adjacency. So now I just need to figure out where the actual cities are going. Um, but this is going to be a very, very strong golden science start to the game. Now I could theoretically change this to do this instead, if I wanted to go in a more of a cultural direction early, which is a totally valid way to play the game. But this is kind of what it's going to look like very, very early. I haven't decided what exactly it's going to fit in here, but this is what we're going to go for. And that tells me I'm going to need masonry to harvest stone. So after irrigation, I'm going to start making my way towards mining. I could theoretically go to war with Beijing super early, but that's kind of like, I, I feel like domination is not tall, right? It's, it, domination is inherently a wide kind of gameplay style. So playing tall is kind of a little bit more considered. Let's grab God King and Discipline here so we can fight people a little bit better. Continue exploring here. We have another copy of a luxury resource. I just want to mark them on the map so they're a little bit more visible for me. Hello, Russia. It's an honor to meet you. We'd love to sample your hospitality. So meeting, finding Russia is telling me that culture might not be the way that we go this game in terms of a cultural victory or any sort of religious stuff. Russia is just really, really competitive on those fronts. But we'll see what our late game plan is. Okay, our next tech is likely to be foreign trade because we can get a trader and send it to Johannesburg for early gold and envoys. Start building up that relationship, giving the capital extra production. This scout hanging around my borders is kind of annoying. I'm glad he got hit by the flood. Not the halo flood, just like a natural disaster. I'll bring my own scout back to kill him while I continue to explore down here with my warrior. And I think my plan is starting to take shape here. Uh, one, two, three... Mm. Am I killing all of my wheat resources here for haciendas later? Probably. Because I could extend this hacienda carpet a little bit, like so. Settle, like, right here. Oh, and, and to actually, like, explain what I'm doing here is I'm trying to plan a tall empire, and a tall empire typically has somewhere, somewhere in the region of four to six cities. And I'm planning my first three. And I think these are going to be my first three cities, even though they're weak in a lot of respects, these two cities I'm planning, they will be totally fine because they will act as a buffer towards China here. Um, and it'll keep them out of my borders. I could also theoretically one, two, three. Yeah, no, we're going to play a little bit more conservatively here. The city could move down into the right one or down into the left one would mean I'd have to buy more tiles. I think down and to the right might be more viable. It depends on what I reveal over here on the left. Russia is already expanding to the east towards me. All right. It's understandable. The scout killed himself on my scout. Let's go check out the north of us. There might be a city up there, depending on the quality of the land. Maybe there's a natural wonder. There is a natural wonder over here. Unfortunately, Russia will absolutely get that and get a pair of really nice holy sites on either side of it. Although he'd probably get harassed by that galley forever. Looks like Russia actually backed up weirdly. Not sure why that was. Ah, we've got more really nice luxuries over here. Okay, I could see moving the city down to the left one to be closer to the spices. Spice tile is really good for food. One production will give the city a lot of growth. The production down here is slightly worse compared to having access to the sheep tile and this one food tree production tile. But I would also have access to the silk. So I think maybe moving down this city one tile gets me closer to these two plantations while still being in range. One, two, three of taking part in the government plaza adjacency stuff. I think this city right here is going to be doing the um, 
industrial zone for my empire. I'm likely going to only build one industrial zone this game. And I think it will look something like that. I'll have an aqueduct and a dam and an industrial zone. And then probably like a campus here, a campus here. And you can see I'm planning around having really, really good adjacency. So that's working out nicely. Haven't fully decided on what goes on these tiles though. My one worry is if I do pick up animal husbandry, there could be horses on this tile here. The question is, do I want my do I want to go theater squares or do I want to go campuses early? I feel like the normal progression is theater squares. I think I'm going to do theater squares this game. Yeah, I think I think I think we'll go gold culture, and then maybe science, and then military units of some kind. But yeah, I think I think early theater squares is kind of like the play that I'm looking for now. And the reason for that is, uh, the earlier, the more culture I have early in the game, the faster I will get to my haciendas, and haciendas are like a big part of playing tall as uh, as Grand Colombia, right? Because they, they give me housing, they give me food, it gives me production. It lets me make utilize the land that I have to the highest level. We have access to irrigation and our first settler is out. I probably have the gold to buy a builder in the next couple of turns and I will make our settler make his way down to the first city location and then we'll get started on another settler. And then now we can get our scouts moving in less defensive ways because we've managed to get rid of all the barbs and stuff that were bothering us. The nice thing about Grand Colombia too for settling is their settlers move faster. So they get to where they're going a little bit quicker. Might be a good idea to look through Russia's land while I'm still able to go through his borders. Just to have a little bit of a look around and learn what I can about them. Um, but what I really, really want to find with these scouts are city states and stuff like that. This is a Pangea map. So there is like a whole south half of the map here that we have to worry about. Okay, let's throw down our first city. Remember to delete my map tax, yes. And uh, when you settle a brand new city, the first thing you work on is a monument. I really want to buy this tile, but I also want to buy a builder. The return on investment from a builder here is quite good because I'll be able to get two plantations out of it. So I'm going to go builder. Maybe... I'll definitely get at least one plantation here. And then I can sell that for extra gold and, and see where we stand. Pop down the plantation, perfect. Also, I'm gonna come in here and get rid of the builder lens applying. And then I'll come in here and see if anyone wants to buy my spices for a reasonable price. Looks like they'll pay a hundred gold. Yeah, I'll take the hundred gold and then I'll use that hundred gold to buy a cotton tile that I can go ahead and improve as well. So I wanna optimize for getting settlers here. So if I move my population around a little bit, I can work these two high production tiles and shave three turns off this settler. Um, and that's what we're going to go ahead and do. So Russia is throwing shade at me because my people are starved for science and art. And that's partially just because the deity AI gets so many bonuses to their science and art, uh, culture in the early game. That's hard to compete. I could put a mine on this copper. However, I really want the boost from masonry. So I may just opt to improve the cotton. Accept that. And then improve the uh, stone so that I can get masonry a little bit sooner and actually be able to put my government plaza down on that tile. I think that works out a little bit better for me. Russia, finally settling the Dead Sea. A little bit of a drought north of China. Okay, it doesn't affect me. The nice thing about unlocking this quarry tile is it may actually shave a turn off of my settler. Nah, it doesn't quite. But at least it means I have a slightly more food surplus compared to working the hill. And that'll mean that I might... One mechanic you have to be aware of in cities is when a city grows, you get to keep the food, but you lose a, po or sorry, when a city builds a settler, you get to keep the stored food, but you lose a population, which means that the population threshold goes down. And so if you have enough food stored, you lose a pop, but you immediately grow it back. So the amount of food you're earning as you're, you know, getting settlers is actually kind of relevant in some ways. Let's go ahead and pick up this tribal village, Mastery of Masonry, and we can go ahead and pick up faster movement on hills. So now, like, Grand Colombian scouts, if they hit a few tribal villages, they become, like, omega fast, like, insanely fast. There's foreign trade, really, really nice. Let's get to work on um, early empire. Our goal is to get early empire super fast this game and quickly settle another three cities from our capital. And then once those three cities are down, we have no more cities to get. And it's likely one of them is gonna be somewhere in this area here between me and Russia. One of them is going to be to the north, maybe to pick up these luxuries. I'm thinking one will maybe go like, there's an interesting city right there. 
potentially, because there's like a good campus in this city that doesn't need help. There's also potentially either a harbour to improve these fishing tiles or a commercial hub. It's a plus three commercial hub at a baseline, you know, so we have options. This city kind of excites me. It's in a relatively good position as well defensively. This is slightly better defensively. I think, I think this suits me better. One, two, three. Three. It does leave open a settlement here, which I don't love, but it's off fresh water if I settle anywhere near there. So I think I'll just stay with the course. So that'll be city four. City five over here doesn't look very viable, which might mean that this city needs to move in order to claim this silver. If I move the city to the right one tile, it'll be off of the coast, but it will actually claim the silver. Hmm. I kind of wish I knew what was behind this tile. It could be like the game changer for me over here. The quality of this land is just really poor. I wish I had a scout to send to the east. Can I, how much is a scout? Can I maybe buy one? If I could maybe buy a scout, I would send it. Let's see. I can get 67 gold from you. Then I will do that. Buy myself another scout. Go up to three scouts here. Just because I need to know what's happening over there. Because I might settle that direction. Let's get to work on masonry because we want to be able to place our government plaza. And now this scout is like insanely fast. Um, it's a thing of beauty. Look at him just whipping around. Oh, another free scout. Wow. Okay. Yeah, that's unfortunate timing on that free scout. Yeah, let's go ahead and build a quarry right there. Seems good to me. That'll boost craftsmanship, which is, you know, you, you get that for boosting or building three tiles. I have a lot more scouts than I had planned, which, you know, is not great. But the one upside is I should get a decent amount of error score from exploring. Let's go ahead and kill this scout. It'll get me a nice kill and it'll boost bronze working, which is quite handy. So we have secured a normal age at the very least. If I could get a golden age, that would be ideal. Golden ages are always the ideal that you want to be rushing for. Um, we do have room for a settler right there. Perfect. Oh, I'm going to pop up here. Barb camp. Now that actually represents an interesting development because we could have this just be a barb camp. We can let this develop into a city state. That's an option for us. And it will claim the silk and the silver for us eventually. So we don't even have to really think about settling this northern area, which maybe pushes a couple of our cities to the east. So now that we've got our first two settlers out, we get to work on the monument in the capital so that we can get early empire a little bit faster, give the city a little bit of time to grow, uh, to get that boosted. And uh, then we'll be able to build three more settlers at a much faster rate. Uh, we, we could keep building settlers here, right? But if we delay just like a little bit, we could maybe get a settler, we could get a builder, we could get a trader, we get a little bit of infrastructure out, and then we'll be able to build settlers 50% faster, right? So there's like, it's an opportune time. You want to get one to two cities and then think about what your next step is. I think spamming cities a little bit too hard too early because actually just like a, a weak play. Yoink, another tribal village, plus one population in my empire. That's another step towards early empire being boosted. Uh, let's make sure we're working our best tiles. Be careful with locking tiles in the early game. Sometimes your city will like change around what it's doing. Right now, I think the emphasis is on growth. Yeah, growth is the emphasis for me right now. I need to get my population back up so I can work more tiles. Let's go ahead and crack down my third city. This city will also immediately get to work on a monument. The tile that I want to work is this three food tile so the city can grow a little bit faster. Actually, do you know what? I'm going to take this the stone tile from my capital, get that two food, three production tile going. I want to buy the spices tile in here, and then I want to buy the silk soon. I'll need a builder down here too. So we've got the beginnings of our tall empire. Our first three cities are down, and I think our next two are going to the east. It all just depends on what's actually over here. I got another recon unit. What is happening? <laughs> we found Geneva. A lot of scientific city-states so far. Two uh, is not bad. Geneva wants me to construct an encampment. We could do an early encampment if we wanted to. Potential free builder here. With our high movement, we can grab that and send it home. Um, very, very valuable pickup to be able to steal an early builder from a barb camp. It's rare that you get that chance. We met Germany. Remember, every sieve that we meet is an extra plus one era score. So we need another 10 era score to hit a golden age. Now we're probably, ooh, I was not expecting that eagle warrior there. I might be dead, unfortunately. Yeah, probably dead over there. Well, if we can maybe step away. It just depends. If Muscat shoots this eagle warrior, I'm safe. And then I can get this uh, builder home. I don't know if I want to be working gold this early. I'm working a lot of food so I can justify this deer tile now. 
Once we have masonry, we want to pick up riding and currency. Those are our next two steps. Hello, Barb Camp, another Barb Camp. And it looks like Muscat did, in fact, shoot him for me. So we will get away scot-free with a free builder. This is why scouts are important. You can get a lot of value from just being able to be out on the map and be active uh, in a variety of locations. Nice thing is, too, my builders actually move faster, so he will actually get to my homeland in a relatively short amount of time compared to other civilization builders. We actually have access to a couple of pretty good luxuries over here. No bananas, unfortunately, in my empire, which would have given me more plantation resources. But hey, there's masonry. So we can now get rid of this quarry if we wish when we're ready for our government plaza. Six turns until early empire. That'll speed up once this monument finishes. So I'll probably have time to either get a builder or a trader before I spam another three settlers. You have a think about that. If I sent a builder to Guayaquil, I could get these new tiles up really, really early. And these are really, 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 really nice tiles with the addition of a plantation. Yeah, I think we'll go builder and then we'll head into the final three settlers. So this is what my build queue is going to look like. This is kind of like, now you don't have to play tall exactly this way. I'm trying to just give you like a general template about why I'm doing things, what I'm looking for. Generally, I would probably go a little bit wider than we're planning right now in this particular situation. Um, but that doesn't mean you can't go tall ever. I think a lot of people are used to Tall being four cities in Civ 6. It's more like four to six cities. So just keep that in mind. And it's also about how early you get those cities. You want to hit that four to six city number really, really early into the game. I'm probably going to need a real military to escort over here. My scout's also getting murked a little bit, so I'll have to play it safe. Uh, now, in terms of Pantheon... We could get culture from plantations. I think that's just like the perfect play this game. We have so many plantations. We already have two plantations. That does make this plantation more viable to work. Now early empire is only one turn away. I want this guy parked here to catch any scouts coming down from this barb camp. I'll send you back up north to catch these uh, scouts as well. I'll send you east. Continuing to explore. It looks like these guys might be at war with each other. And it looks like Germany and China are at war, which is great news for me because that means they're not at war with me. That's like ideal scenario here. I need another eight era score. There's early empire, so we can get open borders with people and we don't need our pantheon anymore so we can plug in urban planning. But I really want to have colonization in so I can build my settlers faster. So I will plug in colonization, even though it doesn't help right now because I'm going for a builder. Um, I'll finish that builder and then go for settlers. So we want to get the political philosophy and drama and poetry ASAP. So we're going to go craftsmanship, state workforce into political philosophy, at least for now. That's kind of like the general plan. Um, I could go fast Pingala here this game. I think fast Pingala is reasonable. I could also go Magnus with surplus logistics if I wanted to do internal trade. Am I going to do internal trade this game or am I going to do external trade? I feel like external trade is a little bit more powerful for me here, which means I'm pointing in a Pingala direction for Bogota. So Pingala first, that'll get me a 15% science and culture boost in the city. And then the next points I get will also advance that. I will send a delegation to China. Oh, he won't take it. Sorry. I meant to say I will send open borders to China. And I'll also send open borders to Russia. Open borders with the AI improves your relationship with them. So it's usually a good idea to do it. They will sometimes ask you for a little bit of resources, but sometimes they'll pay you. That's okay. Mutual open borders. You don't have to do mutual. You can just buy it. You can just sell it to them or buy it off them. I find mutual is kind of the best of both worlds. Mutualism is a valid strategy. Mm. Yeah, I, here's, here's what I'm thinking for this city. I'm thinking if I plant a city on this coastline, I have a reasonably good harbor, which, yeah, sure, it's not the greatest thing ever, but I will have access to a luxury. I'll have access to a mine and a reasonably good campus in the late game if I choose. The problem is you never want to go half coastal. You either go full coastal or no, or just like off coast. So that's my problem with that one. Theoretically, I could settle off coast here. Still get one, two, three. Well, I wouldn't get the silver is the problem. This does. This is just not a very good settlement. Could we do maybe a seven city tall build? Two, three. Seven is where I would start considering it a wide build, personally. Like five to six cities feels, like four to six cities feels tall. Seven, I mean, seven is kind of on the borderline. Once you hit 10 cities, that's a wide build, in my opinion. Yeah, I'll see. It, it depends on what this land looks like over here to the north and what I think I can get away with. Okay, I have my scout in double defensive terrain, fortified, healing. This warrior will be coming across. I will heal. He will attack. My builder might be able to escape. Oh, my builder has just attracted too much attention now. We got our monument in here. Let's get to work on the trader. That'll boost currency for us. 
boosting currency is important. All right, scout taking a hit. We've got access to riding now, although we don't really care that much for riding. It's not important to us. Is there a continent split here? There is. So the continent split makes things a little bit more attractive for me to go for seven cities here because there is potentially tea on a plantation, which fits with my build, right? I'm, I'm, I am the plantation guy. There's tea down here. There's oranges here. Oh man, it's hard not to, it's honestly, it's hard not to continue to expand. We could do a slightly taller version where I don't try to cram as many cities in here. Sure. But yeah, I'm really pushing, I'm really pushing the definition of a tall build here. See, this is the problem with a tall build is that it's rare to get circumstances that genuinely calls for you to play in a tall fashion. Because it's it, like, what style you decide to play is entirely dependent upon the situation that you find yourself in. If you find yourself in a situation where you can get away with getting a bunch of extra cities, like you're just playing incorrectly if you don't. So we'll see, we'll see how this develops. Okay, so the land quality isn't that high here, which means we don't have to go to extreme extents here. I don't think this city is good enough to settle. I think we can skip this one. It's an okay city, um, but if I'm going tall, I may as well just have this land inside my other cities. So there's definitely a city here because that gets me two, two plantations. There's definitely a city somewhere over here near this T. I think off coast will be ideal. So maybe a city right here has some potential, captures all three of these luxuries. A city here captures these two luxuries. And then a city over here, maybe like just like here-ish for now. This is kind of like the preliminary planning of an extra three cities. These are fairly tall. The problem is that this kind of configuration implies a city in the middle here to build a, a, an industrial zone in to, to make all the other cities better. Thinking industrial zone here? Nay, if I move that industrial zone one to the left, it'll get boosted by the quarry. Okay, so where's the city for this going? I think... In ideal circumstances, it's going here. And the reason it's going here is because it can't be in range of these two cities. Man, there's also another city down here. Oh, why am I in a, why am I in a wide game when I'm trying to play tall? I don't know. I'll have to think about it here. Because I could theoretically just stay on these four cities, but like the game is just like it's screaming out to me to settle down here. It's like it, like it's so rare on a Pangea map that you get your own entire continent unsettled, essentially, with access to a potential third continent as well. God, am I playing the Aztecs again? What's happening? What's actually happening? We've got our monument in Caracas. This city needs a builder, for sure. Tiles would I improve? Probably just the copper and the cotton. So maybe I'd be better off just get using this city's meager production to get an extra settler out. I think that's the reasonable thing to do. Yeah, yeah. It's the best way to multiply my current production is to build settlers in as many cities as possible just so I can get rid of that settler card. The sooner I can plug out the settler card, the better. There's England, it's an honor to meet you. There's no extra luxuries here, so I don't think I need to settle here, although there is a geotherm, which kind of implies a plus three campus at a baseline here on both of these tiles, which, you know, maybe shifts this city down to the right one so that it's in range of this one at least getting a plus three for free. You gotta look for those opportunities to kind of like space your empire out appropriately. I think I just leave this area up here blank. If a city state appears and grows in it, it's fine. Oh, wow, England has a relatively large army over there. Unfortunately, I'm still seven era score away and uh, the era is over. So you kind of need a little bit more, but we do have access to a Commandant General now getting our plus four era score in this era. And we have access to the government plaza, although I'm not going to place it just yet. So Jose, Jose Antonio Paez will give plus four combat strength to all cavalry class units within two tiles when it's retired. So these are like the permanent buffs that these guys can give. They Otherwise, they give plus one movement. Plus one movement is quite valuable. I do plan some districts this era. Free inquiry is like usually the best one. Am I going to be getting many inspirations? Probably not. A lot of the inspirations come early. Eureka's you can get, like, because some of them are like literally build a mine, build a pasture, build an iron mine. Yeah, I feel like free inquiry is like way easier to, to farm era score on. So I'll just take that. So we have a trader now. I could trade with Johannesburg and get an envoy there. I think I'll put this trader into the capital and trade with Johannesburg, do some international trading early in this campaign. 
um, and then we'll get to work on another settler. So all three of my cities are making settlers. This is an incredibly risky play. However, I am banking on the fact that Germany and China are at war and Russia is just a little bit too far away to probably want to go to war with me just yet. Let's go ahead and plonk down a plantation right there. Really, really nice. And we'll go ahead and take Connoisseur on Pingala. You take Connoisseur first because you want Culture first because Culture first lets you get to these further governor titles faster. So it's just like a slightly more efficient way to do things. I could theoretically steal this builder. It depends on how high I roll. Wow, rolled low. Really nice. Really nice. Low rolling. Imagine low rolling on a free kill. And now I can't even kill it, but I, I can promote, I guess. And then try again. All right, we got our, we got, so we've managed to steal a couple of builders, which is quite valuable um, this early into the game. Let's trade with Johannesburg. So that's going to be an envoy plus a road between my two cities and the booster currency and plus one era score. So pretty valuable right there. I do also now have access to silk to sell. 10 gold per turn, 10 GPT or 100 gold. I think 10 GPT is better. I'm going to start playing for the GPT because I don't uh, I don't have things that I need to buy immediately. Maybe if I saved up enough money, I could buy a builder or a settler. Unlikely. My gold is mostly probably going to be on builders and tiles, buying tiles for my cities to work. Speaking of builders, you're on, you're in my way. Um, so I want to get a mine up for a Eureka. Let's buy a builder in the capital. Boom. So I can get that mine. So in terms of this, hold on. Yeah, that's going to be a mine. Then what else? Two sea resources, three different specialties, three mines. Yeah, there's probably going to be a guy that I built three mines on. A mine there, mine there. And where's my final mine going? Yeah, probably here. Let's throw it down, get, get apprenticeship boosted. Let's get this builder making his way home and get the scout healing up. All right, nice. We got a new civic from the thing. We got our political philosophy. We got our government. We want to think about the government that we want to go for here. I would say the classical republic is a good all-around starter government because it has three cards, uh, economic cards. We'll keep discipline plugged in for now, but we can also plug in urban planning alongside this and then plug in um, charismatic leader to earn influence points. Now, I do have the envoy quest mod plugged in um, and a couple of people want a great general right now. Another one wants a Eureka for sailing. I have no plans for coastal settlements, so... Not very easy missions to trigger here. I could smash this and I will. I wonder where this England settler is going. Did I block it by moving in its way? I mean, if I've blocked that English settler, that's something I'm more than happy to keep going. Huh, I don't like the way that English settler is going, so I'm going to try and block it by standing right here because it looks like it's heading over here to the left and I want this to be mine. So if I hold both of these tiles, they'll have to go all the way around. They might not have knowledge of that, so they might not path that way. So it's kind of like I'm, I'm tactically blocking England from getting over to here. Sometimes you get lucky and you're in position to do this sort of thing. Uh, we did also just pick up currency, so it's time to start laying down our commercial hubs. Bogota's commercial hub is going in this location. I'll get that placed. And the reason you want to place it is because when you put the district down, right, even if you're not going to build it, you lock in the price of the district. Every single turn that goes by that you research a technology or you advance your civilization in some way, your districts get a little bit more expensive as the game goes on, right? So if you place the district, it won't get more expensive. And so that's why it's important to do that relatively early. I was going to place the district in this city, but keep working on a settler. Barb Scout would be a little bit of a problem, but I think it's from this camp. Can't tell. It should be okay. Now, let's go ahead and unlock wheel because that'll give me access to the water mill. And the water mill is a tech boost, as is ancient walls. So I'm going to want to build ancient walls at some point. We'll go ahead and improve another plantation. Getting lots of early culture here. I've got a spare luxury. Four gold per turn for spices plus 120. It seems pretty good. Going for a very, very early gold-based build here from selling luxuries. And that's a totally valid way to play. In fact, it's a way I would encourage you to play. Is because if, you, if you're taking resources from the AI, that's resources they don't have to use against you. Let's use our commandant over here to scout for just any barbs that might try to snipe this settler that we're sending to go capture this city. Boom, there's our second mine. We'll need one more to get the boost for apprenticeship, which will be another era score. I'm just trying to pick up as much era score as possible. 
it's not like a ma I'm not majorly focusing on it, but if I can pick up Eriscore, I will. I want to build this pasture as well, although I'm lacking animal husbandry. Let's pull back and grab... Well, I don't want to unlock animal husbandry yet until I have my theater squares placed. And until I have my theater squares placed in here implies that I need this city to grow a little bit faster, which might imply a granary to get the city to grow faster. Or could I do a harvest of something? I could harvest this wheat, but I don't know if I want to do that. Uh, let's go ahead and kill this outpost. Now, can this scout survive getting hit twice? He's on defensive terrain. No, I don't think he can. He could survive getting hit once, I think. But getting hit twice might be a bit too much. Maybe if he's fortified for a turn, maybe he's okay. Because he, yeah, I think he might be fine. Oh, wait, I have the, I have the, no, 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 I have the combat card in. We're fine. So we did manage to redirect this English settler by blocking the mountain passes. I'm going to stay here for a few turns just until I see that city get settled. And then I can maybe safely move. It looks like they're coming around, like as I predicted. And I do want to prevent that if I can. So let's get the scout keeping an eye on that. And I'll move the builder into a position to potentially block here if I can. Pull back both of these units. To a safe distance. Yeah, I am going to go ahead and purchase a granary. I know it's an unorthodox thing to do here, but I need this city to hit four population ASAP so I can place the theater square and then actually research animal husbandry. I, should, I shouldn't have placed the commercial hub in the city. I thought it was four pop. My brain just like auto-filled and you, know, you make mistakes when you don't pay full attention. So you're parked there waiting for animal husbandry. That's perfect. You managed to draw those away to keep debating them while my warrior heals. He'll be able to come back and kill them. Now, if England settles in place here, I'm okay with it. Just want to keep an eye on what they're doing with these units. All right, let's plonk down this city. Boom. Perfect. And we have two really, really good spice tiles here. That'll give this city a lot of tempo. First things first, always get your monument. Always get your monument. Let's place our commercial hub because... Even though that's a forest shop, I think placing the commercial hub will save a significant amount of production in the long run. Yeah, I will not settle any closer to you, Russia. Apologies for that. Drama and poetry is done, so we can actually place our theater squares now. It is our first theater square placed in the capital. Not built, but placed. Then I'll go ahead and do a tile swap here so Guayaquil can place their theater square too. And I'll do a tile purchase here and step in and do a chop to get this settler faster and then I can place this a little bit more optimally because I can't get sheep for a while so I may as well get use out of that. I think we're happy with colonization and urban planning staying plugged in for a little while. It would be good to get recorded history to pick up an extra governor title on Pingala. That's a significant amount of extra science if I do that. Let's build our third mine. There's apprenticeship boosted. Perfect. We're up to 35 out of 48 era score. So we are slowly climbing up that ladder. Oh, England is continuing to push. That's not good. I don't like that. Settle in place, please. You, you torrential, colossal ass. Don't go any further. I have to prevent her from stepping any further. She can go in place and it won't destroy my plans, but if she steps a single tile further to the north or west, it'll completely block my plans. So I need her to settle in place right now. Let's go ahead and research bronze working. I think I'm safe to do that. So we'll chop here to get this settler. <gasps> I lowered the city's population, so I can't actually place the thing. Well, we can use the overflow on a water mill for now. Because I want the boost from building a water mill. Even though the city won't get much value from a water mill. We can start sending this settler to the northeast to go claim this land. Now, if I was playing typically... I would be cramming cities. I'd cram a city in here. I'd cram a city here. I'd cram a city here. I'd cram a city up here. I'd cram a city, you know. I'm playing very, very conservatively. I'm going for a very, very low number of settlers, which is characteristic of a relatively tall play style. Some might call it sparse play style because your cities are very sparsely placed. They're not very densely packed. It's more of like a dense density versus uh, sparsity in this game, in my opinion is the sort of analogy that you want to be thinking about. Okay, I need this. I need more growth in this city. Is there a growth tile nearby that I could buy or take? I probably should have chopped the wheat. It'll be fine. I guess we'll just wait. The one food tile here is killing me, I think. So I need to switch to a two food tile because that shaves five turns off of the growth here. But I am also building a settler. Yeah, it'll just take a while. It'll just take a while before I can place that theater square. So animal husbandry will have to be delayed. Because I just, I know there's horses here. There has to be. It's, it was like, because remember my original capital was here. So I need this to just, I just, I just, I can't have horses spawn there. It just, it won't work for me. Okay, we are continuing to form a wall. Now, if he, she gets to here, it's bad. 
I'm just, I'm curious as to where she thinks she's going, but we've formed a wall. We're kind of herding her back and forth. My hope is she gets bored and leaves. She is continuing to press and I don't have enough coverage to block. She's going for that tea. I know it. And my settler won't get there fast enough because it's not fast enough. I'll need to buy a scout to kill this scout and retake my settler that's about to get captured. That's unfortunate. Very, very, very unfortunate. I can give this scout an extra movement though with the Commandant General. That's a man at arms. Okay. That is a goddamn man at arms. How much to ask these guys not to attack me? 250 gold. Okay, I need to come up with 250 gold to stash. <laughs> uh, hold on. All right, I'll sell cotton to someone. There's 100 gold off England. Okay, what about spices? Anyone want spices? Any spicy people here? Problem is the city's going to get absolutely murked unless I can get another three gold. There's the 17 gold. And I buy a warrior in the city, which doubles its combat strength, which will have the amount of damage it takes, roughly. So there's the settler getting captured. Now, I do have a Commandant General, so I will be able to capture that settler relatively quickly. Ah, oh, man. I feel like I mispredicted where they're going. I knew they were heading to the north. Damn, they managed to get the run of me. So they're, they're in here now. That's unfortunate. Very bad luck on my part. Okay, we're having a little bit of bad luck. And you know what? Bad luck is probably a good place to end an episode. This scout can tank one hit off this guy, so I will get this plantation up. At the very least, it's a good plantation too. Three food, two production, two gold, and a culture. Everything is looking okay. I'm going to call that the end of the episode. I love you all very much, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.